Hey everyone, this is Phil. Here's part two of the conversation Lilith and I had with uh, comic book legend Jerry Conway. In this part, we discuss all of his DC Comics work, uh, everything from his creation of characters like Power Girl, Jason Todd, Firestorm, and uh, his classic uh, run on the Justice League of America, including the Justice League Detroit stuff. Uh, and if you want to get the whole conversation, once again, part one will be is on the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Uh, so if you listen, you should listen to both parts and get the complete conversation. And uh, it's a great thing. It's a great. It's a great. Uh, it was a great time with a great man. So sit back, relax, and again, here's the conclusion of our talk with Mr. Jerry Conway. All right. Well, that- I, I, I definitely can see your uh, affinity for strong female characters. My favorite thing you ever done was All Star Comics and the creation of Power Girl. Obviously, oh, <laughs> as a DC fan, I, I absolutely love that. It was just like such a breath of fresh air when I discovered those. I was just like, oh, this, this works. <laughs> <laughs> Much more than like well, I, I- Supergirl, his cousin. You know, like it was something different <laughs> and set apart. Right. Well, that was the thing is I knew I wanted to do that book, uh, All Star Squadron, you know, uh, with uh, All Star Squad, uh, Super Squad, um, with a uh, a younger cast, you know, to uh, to introduce you know the readers who didn't really know those older characters, uh, and I wanted to do a version of Supergirl that wasn't going to be like Supergirl, who was at that time. Uh, treated as a very girly character, you know, at least the, the, the kind of girly character that middle-aged men thought women were. Um, and doing Power Girl was sort of like to, 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 uh, to do something that was opposite to that, you know, where she was fully empowered, took no crap, <laughs> did not see herself primarily as Superman's cousin. And that's why she's not called Supergirl. She calls herself Power Girl because she wants to differentiate herself from, you know, uh, him. She's not in his shadow. Uh, she's her own self. So I, I was happy with that uh, creation. Uh, and, and it's another character that, like Punisher, other people have done really well and, uh, you know, uh, given her probably more personality uh, and more development than I, than I did in the brief year or so that I worked on the book. You've done, you've done so much. You can only do, you can, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. <laughs> I, I did a lot more than I probably should have for many years. I was a, a workaholic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that shows, honestly, I like uh, your team dynamic stuff, like with, uh, you know, Justice League and stuff like that too. Like that takes a lot. Like it's so many moving parts in a team book, but you do it mm-hmm. so well. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you I have like, are there to... like any like um, conflicts? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you, you please ask. Like any conflicts that are like thinly veiled that you just kind of like work through in those team books? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you draw on your own, your, own personal, uh, your, your own personality and your own personal experiences for everything. Uh, I, di- I didn't have anything necessarily that were, was a direct correlation, but, you know, my, my conflicts with friends were similar, you know. Uh, I mean, jealousy and uh, ambition and uh, you know, misunderstanding are all part of the human experience, common human experience. And that's really what those characters, uh, those those group books give you an opportunity to uh, to work with. Um, doing the Justice League was a lot of fun, uh, partly because it gave me the opportunity to write a lot of characters I really liked as a kid. You know, I mean, I... I, I Big Green Lantern fan, you know, uh, Zatanna fan, um, uh, fan of uh, the Red Tornado of all people. You know, I just like those characters. So having the opportunity to, to write the book uh, gave me a chance to play with those characters, you know, and, and, and sort of bring the Marvel character approach to the DC plotting approach, which was the, the, the kind of merging that I tried to accomplish. You know, where I tried to do stories that uh, uh, were reminiscent or echoing of the kind of kind of you know, which were these kind of puzzle stories, or or uh, you know, you you've got a big bad and you have to 
deal with him in a, uh, a almost an intellectual way. You know, where you have to, to counter him rather than with a big fight. You have to counter him with some clever solution you know, or, or pseudo solution. And then at the same time, get to write the characters, you know, the way that uh, Marvel uh, uh, group books would, would develop their characters. So it was it's a lot of fun to do. I mean, I'm, 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 I, I think I'm most satisfied long term with the JLA run uh, as storytelling, you know, over a long period of time uh, at DC. You know, that would be the thing I most was most satisfied with that and Firestorm. You know, oh, Firestorm. I, I yeah. I have a lot of, yes. a lot of personal, <laughs> personal uh, fondness for it. So that's yeah, a, that's the character that has so much personality. Just chef's kiss on that one. Yeah, two. I love I love that character. I mean, there, every once in a while in a in a creator's career, you you, you hit a mother load without really knowing that you've hit it, <laughs> you know, and it's like, and then afterwards you go, oh yeah, that that really works, uh, and that character is one of is one of the instances where I feel like I I stumbled upon something uh uh inadvertently that uh that works really well you know and, and could be could be done really well by anybody who approached it with uh some kind of awareness of what was uh what was at work with it just like spider-man i mean anybody who knows what they're doing with spider-man or you know understands the character in the slightest can write that character, you know, and that's, that's, that's an easy character to take over, uh, you know, as opposed to somebody like, say, uh, Reed Richards, you know, I mean, how do you write? I, I've never found anybody who convincingly wrote Reed Richards <laughs> as a character because he's not really got much going on, you know, personality wise. Uh, but Firestorm and Spider-Man, uh, Ronnie Raymond, uh, with Martin Stein is an easy, uh, an easy characterization to get right, and if that wasn't Classic straight man and no. clown, <laughs> yeah, dynamic yeah, with those both. two. Well, I mean, it's the, it's the adolescent and the adult in our, uh, the adult voice in our heads, right? You know, every adolescent goes around with a parent voice somehow in their head, telling them they're not doing it the way they should be doing it, <laughs> you know, or 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 uh, second guessing them, or they're second guessing themselves. So it's it just sort of works. And the fact that Ronnie isn't the brightest, you know, brightest kid in the in the uh, the class, you know, helps too. But he always means well. He's always trying really hard. And then if that wasn't enough, then you created uh, Jason Todd, the second Robin. I mean, that- well, I created a Jason Todd. The yes, we all know they have changed you know, Tim Brown. Yeah, one, but, uh, yeah. So was that a uh, thing? I gave them the opportunity to kill him off. So. <laughs> So is that a situation where they were like, hey, we want to keep Dick Grayson in Teen Titans. We need another Robin. Hey, can you create something for us? I I don't know that it was – I don't know that it came from any kind of uh, top-down decision. I think it was something both Marv Wolfman and I uh, independently and maybe even together sort of realized that you can't keep doing this, you know, that that, that we can't really have – uh, Dick Grayson grow as a character in Teen Titans if he's still a sidekick to Batman yeah. in the Batman books. Um, you know, Marv was certainly developing the character in ways that were completely appropriate to the Titans, but dynamically wouldn't fit with you know the, the, the situation in Batman, at least as I was trying to write it. I mean, somebody else could have written it, you know, and it would have all worked. But then the other aspect of it was that Titans, because it was the more successful book, I mean, the most successful book at DC, I think, at that time, uh, it had priority. So, you know, if I wanted to create a storyline in Batman that involved Robin, um, I really couldn't unless it was, you know, unless it fit with what Marv was doing with Robin in uh, Teen Titans. So um, either I had to write robin out of the book entirely or create a new robin and so i went with option b because <laughs> i liked i liked that dynamic 
And is that kind of the reason too why you like um I know you said you love a lot of those Justice League characters, why you went with uh changed up the lineup with Justice League Detroit and everything, because it's like if you do a Justice League book you have to worry what Superman's doing in his book, what's Batman doing in his yeah. book, what's Flash doing in his book. Yes. That that was always the case. I mean yeah. I managed to, to I I I don't know that I don't know that I would have necessarily uh made that change other than the fact that uh we were uh, the, the, the JLA was not selling as well as the Titans, and there was a, a sense of pressure, you know, to to get it up on the same level, you know, as Titans. Uh, I mean, there were two completely different audiences, you know. I mean, you shouldn't, you really shouldn't have compared them. But you know, uh, when when uh, you have an editorial that says basically um, uh, two group books they should both they should both sell at the same uh, when they're basically very different structures uh, you know one is a one is sort of a team up book that's the JLA where characters come in from other books and and meet and uh, play together uh, and the other is an organic team Teen Titans where they don't actually have appearances in other books uh they're very different uh, audiences you know you're 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 benefiting and you're you're benefiting and you're uh being you're you're also paying for it you know it's yeah. like with with the, with a team-up book you're benefiting from readers who want to see a bat be batman in a in a comic book you're getting those readers but you're losing readers who want to follow the adventures of a, of a tightly knit uh, organic group. So you have to sort of say, which, which readership are we going to go for? You know, um, as a creator, what, the way I'd, I'd solve the problem of, of not being able to uh, do stories that involve storylines that follow the, 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 the big names in the, in the, the, the book, I would focus storylines on the, uh, uh, lesser known characters, you know, like I would do storylines that involve uh, Green Arrow and Black Canary, uh, Red Tornado, uh, you know, I do continuing stories with those characters, uh, Zatanna. Uh, but then, you know, as, as I say, there was editorial pressure to bring this, bring the, the sales up to something similar to what they were getting from Teen Titans. So that, you know, that notion not wanting to leave the book and not wanting to just hand it over to somebody else to solve. I, I thought I could take a shot at trying to solve it with uh, the JLA Detroit move, you know, by introducing some new younger characters who would be exclusive to the book and uh, just working with a handful of uh, legacy characters who would also be exclusive to the book, you know, like Aquaman and uh, uh, Marsha Manhunter and Zatanna, none of whom had their own ongoing titles you know they could they could, elongated man you know they could they could work exclusively in uh, uh justice league and i think it could have worked if we'd had a better uh, better editorial support you know with, uh, or i could have done a better job i don't know i was just reading some of those today no they you did an excellent job yeah. you know, it's, 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 always it's one of those weird things <laughs> It's a weird thing, you know. I mean, uh, ironically, those characters ended up becoming really popular in, in uh, the CW shows. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just that at the time, uh, the, I mean, w w it was it was one of those situations where you shoot yourself in the foot. You know, uh, the people who were diehard Justice League fans wanted to see Superman, Batman, Flash, uh, Wonder Woman in the book every month. Uh, so when we took those characters out, they hated it. You know, that, that's what they, not, they didn't want that. Uh, and we didn't really have a way to, uh, bring in the new readers who were, or at least to encourage the new readers to recognize that this was a whole, almost a whole new book. You know, you should just check this out for, for what it is. Um, but ironically, people who discovered the book just when the book became JLA Detroit, people like Jeff Johns, um, for them, that was the Justice League. <laughs> so it became the, the, uh, the book that they remembered and that they had fondness for while it upset the people who were traditional Justice League fans. 
So uh, we're just you know, one of those weird, weird things. As I say, if we had had more editorial support where maybe some cross promotion, you know, some uh, better covers, you know, something that, that, that pointed out that this book was going in a new direction, you know, something that would have uh, alerted the readers that hadn't been following JLA uh, to try it. But we didn't. Yeah, these... Nowadays, that's what they call a jumping on point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You would have got a new team. Yeah. You don't have to worry about following the main book. Nice big number one. Yeah. It would have, you would have got a number yeah. one issue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we never, we, I mean, th- all of that was years to, in yeah. the future, you know. <laughs> yeah. That kind of thinking uh, was was years in the future for us. And then, uh, kind of to kind of cross uh, this streams here. Uh, so, how does it feel to be you? Were, you were the first man to write the uh, well, the first official crossover. You know uh, that mm-hmm. uh, Superman versus the Amazing Spider Man. How how great was that to do? That was great. That was great fun. Uh, we were pretty much uh, uh, Alec. Uh, uh, Ross Andrew and I were pretty much left alone to uh, to do that book on our own as fanboys, and uh, it was uh, it was great fun. I mean, <laughs> never would I have thought that uh, that that would fall into my lap. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing else to say. You know, it was like, how did that come here, about? Here you go. <laughs> there's a there's a story about it on um, uh, the Roku channel. Uh, did a uh, uh, a little mini series called Slugfest uh, that just came out, and uh, everything you want to know about uh, uh, that particular team up is, uh, I think, in episode three or four. So uh, I recommend uh, watch that. Actually, you know, have it's a on the Roku so channel. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> well, actually, you can go. You can watch it on the browser. What I ended up uh, doing because I don't have Roku either. Uh, but if you go Roku Channel dot com and uh, you, then on your browser, you can watch any of their original shows uh and they're they're only like eight minutes long because the original uh, originally this this uh little documentary series had been created for uh quibi quibi if you remember quibi but from yeah. a couple of years ago oh yeah, yeah. uh and uh when that went belly up roku bought the the rights to uh all their little shows so uh, it's actually fairly decent you know i mean it's it's kind of a, it's kind of a clever uh, retelling of some of the stories, although they're not completely accurate, but uh, they're they're accurate enough. I'm 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 interviewed in it, so you know it's got to be good. <laughs> uh, do you have any more questions, Lilith, or should we wrap this up soon? I'm sure, this man's busy. Yeah, we should definitely wrap it up. Don't want to hold him too long, too much longer. But it's been an absolute pleasure. Yes, thank you so much. Great to have such too. a living legend here. I know. I was looking uh, forward. Yeah, once again, thank you. I've been looking forward to this for a long, long time. I'm like, I need to talk to him. I need to talk to him. So yes, you've made a, <laughs> you've crossed off a big uh, thing on my to do list. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's been it was a lot of fun. Thanks. And thanks you both for your for your uh, questions. Oh, um, but before you leave, is there anything you want to promote? Do you have a website or anything or uh, I'm on media? Twitter. Okay. You know, where anybody who wants to be annoyed by uh, grumbling old man, you know, can, can follow me. Uh, just Jerry Conway. All right. Thank you, sir. The great Jerry Conway. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Take care. You too. You too. Bye.